What's up guys, this episode we're diving into Vue.js again. This time we're gonna be talking about a feature of Vue called slots. Probably haven't heard of this before, it's not super common, um, but it is really, really handy and I wanna show you how to use it in this episode. Now Tailwind CSS is just a CSS only library. It doesn't provide you any JavaScript niceties like Bootstrap does with drop downs and tabs and other things like that. So you have to build those things yourself. So your navigations like these simple links here or a header aren't able to have um, JavaScript to toggle drop down. So what we're going to be doing is building a Vue.js component that is generic. That component will be able to be used anywhere in your application and will be able to drop in drop down menus pretty much anywhere. So let's dive into implementing that. So I've got a Rails application here with a Vue and of course Tailwind installed. So we're going to use this as our example and we're gonna implement drop downs in both of these navigations just so you can see how those work. So let's dive into our code. Now we're gonna to need to define this component somewhere. So I'm gonna make a directory called app components or app JavaScript components. And we're gonna create a file in there, app JavaScript components drop down dot view. So this file is going to have a standard template and it's going to have our script for it. And the script really only has to do one thing. So we're going to have our export default. We're going to have our data method in here. And this data method is just going to simply return um, an object with open as false and that will be it. So we're going to have this as the only real value that a dropdown needs to keep track of, which of course is really the only thing it needs, is the uh, memory of whether or not it's open. And so that's pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to do here is define our dropdown as a whole. So this will be kind of a generic idea of a dropdown. Really a dropdown has the button or whatever the link is that you click, and then it has a whole separate section for the visible set of links that are displayed when it's open. So we're gonna have these two sections that we need to have, and then we'll be able to customize both of those using slots. So what we need is basically a div here that's class, relative, and inline block. And of course these are Tailwind classes, so if you aren't familiar with these, take a look at Tailwind, but we're gonna define all of this in Tailwind designs. So then we're gonna have a div. The button role for this isn't required, but it is helpful to denote that this is actually the button that we will be clicking on. And then we'll have a little bit of class styling for this. It will be inline block select none. And when this is clicked, we want to click and toggle the open value. So open is the um, is equal to not open. So that's going to just flip the boolean from true to false every time you click on it or false to true if it's already there. So that's it for this div. And that will be the place where inside of it we want to put in a link maybe or something like that to actually have this um, toggleable. So inside here we'll create a slot and we'll give it a name and so this name will be say the link that we would display and then that slot will just be empty and then underneath it we can define the links for the visible version of the drop down. So we'll have vshow equals open so when it is open we want to show this item. And this is where we will define underneath our slot for name of say drop down items. So we can name this however we would like. Um, so we'll have slot drop down items and that will be where that placeholder is. So these are basically just these um, places where the parent can say hey we're gonna pass in these props um, but you won't have to pass them in actually as props. They can go inside of the tag and in the parent. So we'll show you how that works. Um, but basically these are going to work just like props except that they are defined inside of the template instead of passed in as props. So let's finish up a little bit of the styling here. We're gonna have absolute on this and then we're gonna pin it to say the right. Then we'll have it 32 wide. 
uh, margin on the top of two, and we're gonna change the Z index to 10, so it should show up on whatever content it uh, will be hovering over. So that is how our template will look, and really we have these two main sections, the button, and then the visible open version of it. And so we've given it nothing too special, but all of this stuff is extremely customizable once we get into implementing this. So let's go to our navbar partial and start adding our navigation header. So for example, maybe in the blog link here, we want that to be changed to say features, and then it's maybe a drop down of the features or whatever that you might want to put in your navigation. So we will go modify this one and add the drop down link to it. But first, we're going to need to go into our application JS and register that component for the drop down. So we're going to have import drop down from dot dot slash components slash drop down. That's going to load the dropdown.view class, and then we'll have view.component, and this will be dropdown. Um, you could do any name that you want here, but we'll just call it dropdown, and this will be the dropdown uh, class. So anytime that dropdown is referenced as an HTML tag here, so say dropdown, then that is going to load up the view component inside of our application. And the reason all this works, of course, is because in our application HTML RB layout, we have this data behavior view wrapping all of the content on the page. And that is, of course, referenced here when we create our new view app. So that means we can use view components absolutely anywhere in our Rails layouts and that will automatically be wired up and we can pass in JSON to those really easily. And so you have a lot of flexibility and nice integration between Rails and Views. So I have a link to the previous episode where I talked about how this works if you um, are not familiar with that, but let's dive back in to implementing our slots. Now it's as simple as saying slot equals link here on our anchor tag. If we change this to say like features instead of blog, we can have that actually go through and replace the link in our component. So this is basically giving it little overrides that aren't props where you wouldn't say link equals this like href and blah 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 that would not be great so they give you this ability to pass in slots and then have any arbitrary amount of text in there this is really cool and then you can use any type of tag as well so for the drop down items we're going to put in a div and we're just going to have say the text of hello so in the browser, if we refresh the page, we can see that this hello shows up underneath features and toggles every time we click on it. And that is really cool. And also, we have full control over the dropdown's appearance inside of our um, dropdown here. So we could design this dropdown to look totally different from another dropdown, but they'll still have the exact same functionality. So that is really cool. So this allows us to then go into, say, our hello section here, and we could just use Rails links and say, well, maybe this feature of a blog is part of it, and we can add a class, and we can add some uh, items to that for the styling. So we don't want an underline, we want our links to be blocks, we want some padding, a uh, border on the bottom, some text coloring and backgrounds, and then when you hover over it, we wanna change the color from white uh, in the background to blue in the background. So that'll be pretty simple. And then we can also define some classes on our dropdown itself. So this will actually look like more of a dropdown. So let me grab some classes for that. We're gonna have background of white. We want a shadow on it. We want it to be rounded. We want a border around it and we want overflow hidden as well. So if we do that and we refresh our page, we should see now that when you click this, it looks much more like a real dropdown. And so that is very awesome. We can click those and navigate away and that will work like we would expect. So this is cool. We can add in as many links as we want and they will just automatically um, fill out inside of that dropdown. The other neat part is that because we can fully define these slots however we would like, is that we can then go define them in any other location. So in our index on posts, 
We have this little navigation here that I copied from the repo as well. So if we wanted to implement a dropdown on one of these, we could go define dropdown here. We could say this is slot for the link. Um, this div here will be slot for dropdown items. And we'll have the closing div tag there. And maybe we grab, you know, a similar looking blog item here. And on this one, we'll define some classes like background, uh, white, we'll have the shadow, um, but it won't be rounded and we'll have a border and overflow hidden. And so in this case, we'll now be able to click this link and see a not rounded version of it, but this one is rounded and that will be the different ones. And each one of these will toggle separate from each other, which is really cool. So they're running independently as different components and we can define the styles of these entirely how we would like. If you wanted to make these styles always the same, you could extract that class for the background and everything and put it inside of the dropdown component, or you could make that like a prop or something that you could pass in the style that you would want. So that is kind of cool and very, very flexible. I also really like that if we wanted to add like a carrot to show that it's a dropdown only on this one navigation item, we could go in and paste like an SVG or an icon for that and just drop it in. And now voila, our navigation has a carrot showing that this is a dropdown menu. And of course you need to do some other styling to make it blend in properly and be aligned correctly and all that stuff. But you have absolutely full control over that because those slots that you've defined are fully replaceable and so you're just dropping that stuff into the relevant portion and your drop down just needs to know that one section of this is going to act like a button and we're going to put a wrapper div around that you can fill out the contents however you like and then our drop down really just needs to be absolute and pinned in a certain location now what i've done is i've set a width of 32 up here but you could actually go set that inside of your uh, components here in the drop down item slot and so that would allow you to define multiple widths you could even change the pin as well if you wanted to pin it to the left side um, instead of the right side, it's entirely up to you. And you have a lot of functionality that you can take advantage of from that. So what's really neat about this is this is very, very similar to your layouts where you have yield blocks. If you've ever done something like up in the header, you might have had yield head. And then later on in another template, you might have content for head and it would be some text that you would paste in and that would actually be inserted into the head inside of your layout. That is the exact same type of functionality that you're getting here with Vue.js slots. So what I love about this is that number one, you probably already know how this is going to work because you're familiar with yield and content for and rails. And then number two is these uh, components are very, very simple and you can use them and drop them into any application and they don't control any of your styling. All of that is up to you and how you implement it. For the most part, we had to do a little bit of relative um, and absolute positioning, but of course, every dropdown has to do that. So keep that in mind, of course, but for the most part, this is very generic from every other piece of styling like shadows and borders and backgrounds and all that stuff. It's entirely up to whoever implements the dropdown. So this is cool and I can imagine building up a suite of these to just implement with your Tailwind application. So you have things like tabs, dropdowns, modals, you know, all those different little features that Bootstrap comes with. We could have very generic versions of those in Vue.js that you could just implement in an import statement or something and have all of that ready to go. So hopefully we'll build out some more of these in the future and have that JavaScript functionality already ready for anybody interested in using this with Tailwind CSS.